everybody. So uh, last night I did some world building, some more, um, well, I guess this is universe building in uh, uh, Swan, Stars Without Number, um, in uh, Notion. <laughs> so yeah, I um, the, uh, the last video that I did on doing world building in Swan is actually the most popular video of all time for my channel on um, uh, Odyssey. <laughs> so Odyssey, if you don't know what it is, it's a, uh, it's like a YouTube alternative. And um, they, uh, they pay people in like blockchain. Um, but it's like the most popular video of all time for me on here, or the, the, the most popular video for the last few years on YouTube has been how to clean an airbrush. <laughs> so go figure. But uh, but I'm gonna keep making uh, lore videos. Um, so anyways, I um, I did some uh, some world building and um, I uh, I wanted to sort of build out my um, uh, my uh, precursor faction, right? So, um, my, uh, my precursors are very, like, they're <clears throat> actually, <clears throat> they're, they're very heavily influenced by Traveler. Um, the, uh, the Ancients in Traveler, um, well, I think, I don't know, like, the, the, I think that they, they're also in, uh, in Alien, you know, they're, they're, uh, uh, Malakak, I think that's what they call them, is, uh, uh, Malakak, um, uh, yeah, Malakak aliens, yeah, um, this is a great website, by the way, if you're looking, if you want some inspiration for, um, alien races, the, uh, the, this, this page is, um, oh, you know what, this is, this is specifically like, um, aliens universe, but this is just a, this is a fandom page and it has like, I mean, everything, like every alien species that I've ever heard of in it, you know, in, from sci-fi, um, <clears throat> or, you know, the engineers, um, Ossians, I've never heard that one before, or space jockeys, you know, in, um, in Alien. So this just, like, breaks down some of their lore and stuff, and, um, I also wanted to, so in, in Traveler, hang on, I'll, I'll pull up a, a Traveler, wiki um let's see traveler ancients so uh so yeah the uh traveler you know like actually i think that uh alien and traveler alien the original alien movie and traveler probably came out at the same time like 1979 or something like that you know right around there um, but I think that Alien probably draws more on Traveler than the other way around. Um, so the, the Ancients in Traveler, um, they are a very, very ancient galactic civilization that, um, they once dominated the Milky Way, I think, or, um, I'm not even sure that... In Traveler, I'm not even sure that the Milky Way is part of the actual war. But um, there was a huge uh, cataclysmic war. And um, basically, they came upon a civilization that was more advanced than theirs. And then they just thought that they were, like, basically the only ones out there. Um, and um, they had gone around and, like, seeded um, uh, planets and stuff, like, manipulated DNA, uh, gone around and like, like they, they had taken, uh, humans, like human, humanoids and stuff 
and like taken them to other planets and like messed with their DNA. There's a whole race of um, like furries in um, in Traveler. They're called Varger and they're like wolf people, you know, basically furries. But they they're they're raised up, um, you know, like wolves from Earth um, because they they like came across uh, humans and Earth and then decided that they wanted to use our DNA for stuff. And then, you know, in um, in Alien, the uh, the Malakak or like the engineers, um, they created the xenomorphs um, and then let's see, they the the aliens or sorry the the xenomorphs and then predators you know share the same race or sorry share the same universe in uh the alien universe like 20th century fox um and um the uh the the uh engineers like they created the uh the xenomorphs like as a biological weapon um <clears throat> and like uh if if you've seen any of the um the prequels too there's some stuff that I want to draw on from the prequels like um or like ancient aliens you know and stuff like that where it's like the um the I don't know like tribes that were in like uh South America like I'm thinking there's some there's like a tribe in Peru where they would do like head binding and they would squish, um, like, people's skulls, like, when they were babies, like, squish their skulls to make them, like, have these giant skulls and stuff. And, like, they, you know, were obsessed with, like, star people and stuff like that. So, and that's in, that's in, um, like, the first Alien prequel, uh, Prometheus, you know, where there's, like, all these human civilizations that build, like, uh pyramids you know like um in uh alien versus predator there's like a, a a pyramid that is under antarctica yeah it's like it's it's uh it's hidden under the ice in antarctica the uh the predators come in and like shoot a laser beam into it open up you know it's it's not one of the best alien movies but it's a good one it's like we don't talk about the second one um, but, uh, but I, I, I like all that, right? So I want to borrow some of that stuff for my, for my game. Um, <clears throat> so my, um, my ancients, my, uh, I'm calling them precursors for now. Like that's the, their working title. Um, they are a, an ancient galactic race of people or humanoids, um, but I don't want them to look like humanoids necessarily. I kind of want them to have like, you know, big, like elongated skulls, but that's part of their, their thing is that they're, um, like they, they differ, they look different from world to world. And then where, where, you know, people can find like artifacts of them, of them having existed, um, and the, a big, they're, they're kind of like my go-to magical MacGuffin for things that there's just could not happen with the laws of physics or, you know, just technologies that are way, way too advanced for anything, you know, for like humans to come up with, even in like a very far future, um, like, star system to star system space travel right um <clears throat> in my in my swan universe there are no spike drives right because i have a huge problem with spike drives any kind of faster than light travel um or or even light speed travel you know like just to just to kind of give you an idea of scale right our closest neighbor, I just looked this up, like our closest neighbor, uh, Alpha Centauri is like 2.2 light years away from us. So that means that it takes, you know, two, over two years for light 
to travel from Alpha Centauri to us. And that's the closest star system to us, right? So using our current technology, um, using like our, our current, um, like say that, say that NASA were to build a probe, you know, to, uh, to, to reach Alpha Centauri using our fastest current technology, it would still take hundreds of years to get there, right? Using our, using our, our current technology. So, and then anytime that you have like faster than light travel, like warp speed, or, or even like in, in my, in my universe, the precursors have built jump gates, right? So there is no hard sci-fi for star system to star system space travel, right? The, the most like feasible kind of star system to star system travel is the jump gates or like wormholes, you know, things like that, which comes with its all a whole other host of problems. But, you know, like it's it's way more it makes way more sense than like in like Traveler or even in in Swan too, um the the jumps, you know, like doing a jump from from one end of the galaxy or one end of the universe to the other. I don't even know how big the, uh, like the known universe is in Traveler. Um, it takes like a week, you know, and then like a, um, <laughs> a, um, like even a little shuttle where it's like a two seater, you know, in, in Swan can do a spike drive jump. I think is like that. I've read that. I think I read that somewhere that like, like a little shuttle that would be like a two seater kind of spacecraft could do a a spike drive jump from one star system to another, which is like, I just have a huge problem with that. I hate it. Right. Um, and I want for, um, like star system to star system space travel to be like heavily, heavily regulated by whoever is in charge because they can't just have people popping into their solar system and, and leaving um, without having some kind of, you know, control over that, right? <clears throat> so in my universe, um, <clears throat> the way that humans like leave our star system is that they find a jump gate, which is on the edge of our solar system. It's out in the Oort cloud. Um, and it's just like we find it. It's, you know, it, it's, uh, it's not something that we could see with our current telescopes or pick up with like radar or, you know, any kind of, I don't know, any kind of telescope. Um, but you know, like once humans start spreading out and then getting to the outer reaches of our solar system, we discover this jump gate that's on the edge of our solar system, uh, in the, the asteroid field that is on the very outer edge of our, of our solar system, right? And then they also find these kind of alien artifacts um, from the, uh, the precursors and they're booby-trapped, right? Um, and maybe they don't want us to leave. Maybe they want to control, um, you know, humans uh, coming and going from, from our star system and using their, their stargates. And like, and I kind of want to draw on that too, uh, with like Stargate and, um, and also, uh, Robotech. Like I want to do stuff. I want to have like, um, a race of aliens that's going to kind of be like Invid, you know, or like maybe like the Zentradi, something like that, where they are, um, like humans that have been manipulated by the, um, by the precursors and they're very warlike, right? And um and I'll and I'll get into that. So um the uh the precursors, right, they they're an ancient starfaring race, ancient galactic civilization, and um as humans have spread out, you know, in the galaxy, in the Milky Way, they found evidence of these um of these precursors, you know, 
like I mean, obviously they're they're jump gates. That's one of the the really big ones, right? But also like evidence that they have manipulated not only well like humans, but also like other um, other sofont races. I'm not sure where that term comes from, sofont. Uh, sofont it just means like a uh, an intelligent species, you know, like intelligent alien life. Um, so, you know, like when humans are like spreading out, sometimes when they, when they go through a jump gate and like start exploring a star system, they discover, uh, ruins like precursor ruins. Um, but they also discover other Sofont races uh, so, like, on my player's starting world, there's going to be Hivers, and, um, Hivers are, like, there's Hivers and Traveler, right? Um, my Hivers are going to be more like, more like Kenshi Hivers, um, or if you ever saw, um, uh, what was the... The Neil Blomkamp movie with the uh, uh, District District Eleven. Uh, Neil Blomkamp, but like the um, uh, District Nine, the um, the what do you call them? The prawns. Right in uh, in District Nine, uh, and I and I'm gonna kind of draw on that more than um, uh, so yeah I want I want my hivers to sort of be like prawns in uh, District Nine, right? So um, they. Uh, have actually been transplanted to this planet by these precursors. And the uh, the precursors have been using them as soldiers. They've been using them as, like, cannon fodder in this galactic war. Um, and so on the planet, right, or it's actually a moon, but uh, on the moon, like, there is no evidence of them in the archaeological record these, uh, like, humanoid sort of, like, insect people, uh, or, you know, like, prawns in, um, oh, poly, poly, uh, who, polypqua, polypqua, okay, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so they have been transplanted by the precursors and, uh, put on LVDEMI426, right, and um, so what happens on this, or what, what happened a long, long time ago on this planet, and this is part of like the Hiver religion, is that um, every once in a while, right, like every, uh, not, not every year, but like, I'm not sure, like maybe every like five years or something like that, or um, like every, every few years, um, there's these pylons that are built by the precursors, or they're they're on LVDEMI four two six, and then they will start to like vibrate, right? And um, it sort of drives the hivers crazy. It just drives them insane, uh, as long as well as like indigenous sort of insectoid species that are on this moon. Um, and like there is evidence of these other critters in the in the archaeological, you know, uh, timeline, but not hivers. The 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 precursors took them and put them there, or manipulated their DNA, put them there, because it's a comfortable planet for them. It's you know it has like comfortable uh, conditions for this like insectoid life. But okay, so the 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 pylons start to vibrate, right? It drives them insane. It makes them super violent. Uh, it sort of drives them into a frenzy. 
my uh, my neighbors are doing construction. Sorry about that. Um, it drives them into a frenzy, and then they just have to go to war. Um, but the um, the hivers are uh, very very tribalistic, right? Uh, so in in Traveler, uh, hivers they're they're more like starfish people. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't, like, I do want to borrow some of their, like, culture and society where they, um, they like to burrow, you know, like they, uh, mine are going to be more like ants, you know, they're going to be more like, um, groups of ants and they're going to have a queen, um, like in, um, uh, in Kenshi, if you ever play Kenshi, um, but uh, but the, the I want to borrow some stuff from Traveler. I want to make my some of my hivers sort of like Traveler hivers that they live underground, and they um, you know are very very tribalistic. Like hivers will not fight each other inside their own tribe, but they will fight other tribes. Right? They're very very tribalistic. Um, so. Like basically when these pylons like start to vibrate and uh, it just drives them insane, drives them into a frenzy. And same with like some of the like more dangerous kind of wildlife on this moon. And then they just have to fight. They have to go out and they have to fight. And then, um, you know, like these these wars would happen between the, the tribes and like picture like two ant hills, like two giant ant hills that are the size of cities, you know, of these hivers like sort of just running into each other and fighting, right? And um, they would uh, the then whoever was the victor, right? The um, the 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 whoever like won these these battles. These, you know, the, the ancients would come down in their spaceships, drop the ramps, and, and you know, very pleased with the victors. And it's, you know, it's like, oh, come with us, you know, come with us to space. And, um, and but to them, they're like gods, you know, like they, um, they're, they're these gods that are very pleased with their, uh, with their prowess as warriors and then these guys are using them as cannon fodder in their war, right? <laughs> so, uh, so I think that I think that that's I don't know. Some of it's from some of it's from Kenshi, some of it's from a book, uh, their Master's War, um, and but I'm just kind of I'm taking all kinds of stuff like kind of buffet style and just ramming it together to make a cool sci-fi game. So, you know, if you don't like it, then tough. <laughs> just click off. Um, but, uh, so, the uh, the ancients, though, right, uh, eventually they start losing the war. Um, and, like, uh, the, uh, we, like, when humans have, have spread out, right, and they've they've come across all of these ruins and stuff. Um, they find all kinds of uh, evidence that these that these precursors were wiped out. Um, like they will go to uh, to to planets and stuff. Um, or so so. There's evidence of um, in this like galactic war of um just technology that like we cannot fathom you know like um there's the uh some of the the precursor technology um is like world world bending you know and terraforming so what that would mean is that they can take like if there's like a planet you know they can sort of shift where it is in the solar system and um, they can just pop it where they like where they want it, like put it more in the Goldilocks zone so it's more comfortable for um, 
humanoids or, you know, like that's part of my magical MacGuffin too, of like why there are these planets that are all just sort of temperate and then have breathable, breathable atmosphere and they're just comfortable, you know, to humans. Uh, sort of like in, in Stargate, you know, if you ever watch Stargate, like they just visit all kinds of worlds that have been sort of terraformed and are just in these perfect little Goldilocks zones for, um, for humans. Um, and, but the, one of the things that, that people find when they're exploring is they will find solar systems where, um, uh, world bending, and then this is in, this is Traveler, um, they, they had the ancients or the, the precursors, my, my, mine are called precursors. They have, uh, taken planets and put them perfectly equidistant from each other, like in, uh, in orbit around a sun, right in the Goldilocks zone. And all of the planets are terraform. They all have like plant life on them. They all have like different kinds of breathable atmospheres you know, where it's like one might have more um, nitrogen in it or one might have more, you know, like very variations on um, a breathable atmosphere, but they all have like magnetic fields. They all have breathable atmosphere of some kind. And like, they're all just perfectly equidistant from each other and obviously moved and put there. And it's like, we can't even imagine the kind of engineering and, uh, you know, the energy, the logistics, the scale that it would take to move several planets and put them right, you know, equidistant from each other in geosynchronous orbit around a sun, like in a, you know, in a solar system. But there's also evidence like in these, um, uh, in some of the star systems that we've visited that, um, these, uh, this this race of ancients was a like a, a massive massive galactic um starfaring race like they'll find planets that have um uh precursors like precursor artifacts and stuff um where it's like the the they would have a whole planet that would maybe have like max about a million um precursor population on it right um and then there would be like extensive evidence of agriculture like all kinds of you know um like evidence like if you picture like those fields and like like the rice fields in like china or like vietnam or wherever where they've just totally transformed the landscape due to agriculture um, just like you really, you know, like agriculture that you could see from space, right? But these very small populations, and then they also look very different. Like the, the precursors look very different from world to world. And then the, um, the atmospheres on these worlds are going to be very different. So it's like more evidence of like kind of genetic manipulation. But I mean, like, if, you know, in like, speaking of like hard sci-fi in a hard sci-fi universe, if, if humanity had like spread out to different worlds, we would start looking different too, you know, like, um, if, you know, if, if humans were on Mars and then they're on earth, Martian humans would look very different from earth humans or, you know, people living on, um, like wherever, like Ceres or, you know, Ganymede or, whatever, like some moon of Saturn or something, they would look, they would start to look very different from us, right? They still look like humans, but they would be, they would be very different. Like just, just being on a different world that would start to influence, you know, like what humans there look like. But, um, anyways, so, uh, when, when, uh, humans have been traveling in space, I want them to have come across xenomorphs, right? And um, I want my xenomorphs to kind of be like um, weaponized hivers. So it's like this, uh, this civilization, they had like kind of a special relationship 
with the um, with the hivers. And um, I also want um, I want them I want there to be like no evidence of a hiver home world. Like nobody has ever been able to find it. But there will be like planets that have obviously been destroyed in this galactic war. Like either it's a precursor, you know, home world where it was just totally destroyed. The entire planet was just blown up and turned into an asteroid field or um, like uh, the evidence of like moons being used as as projectiles like slammed into planets and then just breaking them apart where it's like the, the moon has obviously come down and just impacted this planet and left a, you know, a crater that's like a good chunk of the planet. Um, or, you know, like things like that, where it's just like this, this galactic war just destroys whole planets. Or when they do come across like a precursor planet that, that it has extensive agriculture and a very small population it's like surgical strikes where they just vaporized a whole city or just completely killed um, anything that that is uh, has certain types of DNA, you know, like in um, in what was the, the alien movie, uh, the dumb one, uh, not Prometheus. Um, it's the like the the one where they just really dumb down everything from alien I mean there's a lot of those but but like of the of the prequels um you know the one I'm talking about right where it's like they go out and like they see all this evidence of agriculture like wheat fields and stuff um but then there's like viruses that aggressively attack anything you know you with humanoid DNA um but like just basically the the humanoid population has been wiped out by some really really nasty virus um and then uh also like i i want my hivers to i want some of them to sort of uh treat the um treat the precursors like like they were closer like we we have found evidence of them and stuff, you know, um, but that they have this special relationship with them, uh, that they have this like place by their side, like by their right hand side, and that's part of their religion, you know, where it's like they they talk about how the gods like used to come and like take their warriors and and that they, you know, had this very special relationship with the precursors, and um. And that, that when when humans showed up, like, I don't want the Hivers to have a very good written record, like timekeeping, you know, like, I don't want them to have a good calendar system. So it's like part of their like oral history, you know, kind of, where they like talk about the ancients or the, the, the gods that, that used to, you know, have this big influence on them and that how they left. And then the humans showed up, you know, and that the humans are false, false gods. And, um, and that there's some hivers that are like really, really aggressively anti-human. Like they will just kill any humans that they find on site. Um, and that they believe that it will help to bring the gods back. Um, and that there's other like uh, hivers that have kind of more assimilated into human society. But also, like, my hivers, I want them to be um, sort of like xenomorphs. Like, they have, uh, they have like, a chitinous uh, exoskeletons, like insects, you know. But also, I want them to have sort of weak sulfuric acid for blood. And then there's also going to be, like, maybe, like, even oceans. Like, an ocean of weak sulfuric acid. Um on this planet and uh or moon and they're just you know like big big puddles of sulfuric acid like sulfuric acid is gonna be all over the place and then it's a very mineral like dense planet and that's what humans have been 
kind of exploiting them for is doing mining on this on this planet. Um, and then that's like what most of the the hivers who have been like assimilated into human society, like they work in like mines and stuff. It's totally natural for them. Totally, you know, like they live underground or they prefer to like live underground and stuff. Uh, and like, you know, mining just comes to them. It's like second nature. But like, okay, so I'm getting a little off track. So there's like any time that I have some kind of like uh, sci-fi thing that I want to be more hard sci-fi, like force fields, right? Uh, I want to have shields in my game and like personal shields and then also like shielding on ships and stuff like that. And I want it to be something that has been uh, re re reverse engineered from precursor technology, right? Where um, like having uh, directed plasma, like, like plasma shields, that, you know, people can activate that will like deflect bullets or like if you're flying a spaceship and then you, that it would protect it from micrometeorites and space and stuff and like projectile weapons. But I also wanted, I wanted to borrow some stuff from Dune and I wanted the, the shields to get overloaded and possibly explode when they're hit by laser weapons or like energy weapons um, you know, plasma and stuff like that. And, uh, same thing with like a personal shield. Uh, so like in one of the, another faction in my game, um, they're, they're going to have these like special forces guys that are basically like Sardaukar, you know, in Dune and they're, they're religious zealots. And then they all have like personal shields and they don't even carry firearms. Like, they use knives. They use, like, long... They're, like, Gurkhas, you know? And they just want to get in there and start stabbing people and just cutting them in half. And they'll turn on their shield, and then, like, if somebody does hit them with a laser, you know, when they're surrounded by enemies and they blow up, then great. You know, like, they're totally happy about that. But I want the shields to, like, get overloaded by lasers and then blow up. And I also want them to uh, to drive hivers and like uh, in Dune it would be uh, worms, you know, like the if you if you activate a personal shield like in the middle of the desert in Dune, a worm is just going to come up and and swallow you, just go into a frenzy and instantly swallow you. Um, but like I want shields to sort of like drive some of the wildlife on this planet, insane. Uh, and then that's, you know, that's going to come into play like later. But uh, I want the, like the hivers to just, just hate, hate personal shields. And, and that's like part of why they hate the, um, uh, the United Brethren. Yeah, my other, one of my factions, the, uh, the religious zealots, the United Brethren, and then the United Brethren have basically come to this planet uh, and then just tried to wipe out, like they don't want to share. They just want this planet for themselves. They don't, they have run out of options. Um, but yeah, so my jump gates are going to be, I mean, of course, like they've got to be made by the ancients or the, the precursors. Uh, and then genetic manipulation, like, um, I was thinking about doing something with, uh, like an energy source, like, um, uh, protoculture and, uh, in, uh, Robotech, right? So in Robotech, it's been a long time. I was like super into Robotech when I was a kid. Um, in Robotech, the, uh, the, there's all kinds of alien races, you know, that are, um, sort of out there, like, fr fighting over protoculture, which is, like, the ultimate energy source, um, and, uh, I, I, I don't know, but, like, the, um, the Zentradi 
are um, they're sort of a human-like race, you know, but they're incredibly warlike. And uh, everything in their culture is um, is like based around warfare, and uh, they come and they and they invade Earth. Um, so there's there's not going to be anything like that in, in my game as far as like them invading Earth, because um, there's something else that happens with Earth. Like Earth is just cut off from um, from the rest of of known space because of a uh, an apocalyptic event. And then um, Stars Without Number is a post-apocalyptic setting. It takes, it's supposed to take place like, um, I'm not sure, it's like, it's either like 200 or like 2000 years after, like kind of like the fall of like this, of Earth. And then there's all of these different like little colonies that are kind of spread out. And they basically, um, like the whole system of, uh, star system to star system travel falls apart and people just kind of collapse into like civil war and it's like, you know, Mad Max and, um, there's a lot of that kind of stuff in there. Um, like infighting and, and all kinds of stuff like that. But, um, I'm thinking about having some kind of a, like an energy source too, that, um, that humans have like reverse engineered like in um robotech there's the sdf1 that like shows up uh, at earth and it's like piloting itself and then humans sort of like turn it into this uh aircraft carrier thing and then the earth gets blown up and like the only survivors are on the sdf1 or like it gets invaded but okay but anyways like i like the idea of having zentradi Right. And I like the idea of having Invid. Um, and uh, so Zentradi are more like um, they're more like giant humans that are like super militaristic, which like if the the precursors had taken humans and then sort of manipulated them and turned them into like a soldier race, um, maybe that's like where they come from if we do you know encounter some some type of like super militaristic humanoids um that like share our dna that that could be um if i want to have zentradi or something like that in my universe but like invid are different like invid are um they're basically they are like a life form um but they're sort of um it's like they're more like grown um, around technology. So it's like they're they're genetically engineered just basically to be like living weapons um, where they uh, like they can't exist outside of their like little flight suits. Like in um, in their master's war, I'm trying to remember like so there's 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 two of these galactic civilizations that are fighting um, and then, like, the, 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 the Therum, which are, like, going to be, like, my precursors, they sort of, like, come across humans, and then they come across other, uh, intelligent species, and then they just sort of conscript, conscript them into this war. Um, but then the other, the other race that they're fighting, um, they like sort of just grow soldiers like in vats, you know, around their guns or whatever. Um, where it's like the the um where the gun ends and where the life form kind of begins is like it's a little blurry. Uh like cause they they just are even more into genetic manipulation and stuff like that. So and and then that's what I think and like Invid. And uh, and Robotech is kind of similar to that too, but they're going to be kind of like my my MacGuffin for for alien races that are humanoid, because I want I want humans to like visit other planets, be able to go out onto the surface and be like, oh, it's like the gravity is similar to Earth, and like we can breathe the air, you know, like in 
Star Trek or, or whatever, like, how is that possible? <laughs> um, uh, Stargate or something like that, you know? And it's like that the ancients, they did it. Or like the precursors or whatever you call them, that they're, they're responsible. And then when whenever they come across some kind of a... Um, uh, intelligent so font race that they it looks like they've been influenced to make them more humanoid where they have like heads you know and then they have like two arms at least or sort of like more humanoid looking uh even if they're like obviously octopus people you know i still want them to look sort of humanoid where it's like you know they are like split down the middle and then they have like two long tentacle arms and then sort of like tentacle legs that that they like branch off like they've been influenced, you know, by humanoid DNA. Um, and then when, you know, when humans like come across these other planets that are like precursor uh, planets, then there's, you know, all these different uh, like varying looking humanoids that are in the archaeology in like different languages and stuff um and different technologies where um it's like the uh maybe like a more like a galactic kind of confederation right and like i was also thinking that this could be part of like a uh if my players were interested in doing like a dungeon crawl, right? I don't really like doing dungeon crawls. I think they're just kind of boring and it's a slog. But if they did want to do something that was more like a dungeon crawl, then I could have these, um, I could have like precursor sites that are like booby trapped to the eyeballs for them to try and explore and like try and find um, alien technology and stuff. Um, but like, this is part of Traveler, right, is that um, when um, <clears throat> when people would come across of uh, uh, ancient worlds, it's like they would go to one, and then they would see, like, oh, like, they have a totally different language here, totally different writing system, and it's like, it just looks completely different from anything that we've ever seen before. And instead of using you know, like nuts and bolts to fasten things like this together, like we've seen on this other planet. They're using like some kind of like an industrial adhesive, you know, to do the same job. And it's almost like they just approach the problem from like a, a different angle on every different planet, but they are all ancients. So, um, yeah, I was kind of thinking that like maybe these uh these this alien race you know like there's there's evidence of them in space like massive wrecks like uh like titans uh titan wrecks and um what am i thinking of uh not star citizen well you know like just massive massive space wrecks of uh of precursors and evidence of this of this war right but uh, somebody, you know, was was feeding them. And like maybe there's other races that were sort of being influenced by them or like their DNA has been manipulated so much that they're like closer to that level where these uh, precursors would come down and breed with them, you know, take, uh, take food and stuff like that and like have a, a galactic culture that was outside and then planets where farming was happening and stuff like stuff like that to feed this uh, galactic civilization. So, um, but yeah, like I think they they're definitely going to be fans of like genetic manipulation and uh, all kinds of booby traps, like um, like uh, Malakak. Um. Yeah. But I think that's it. <laughs> that was a mouthful.
but that's kind of where I'm at with my with my world building with my um, with my precursors. Uh, yep. All right, I'm gonna end it there, and I will see you guys in the next one.